Threshold from the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. This is a really fun song. Um, I'm really excited to be playing this one. Uh, as you can see, we've got the drums already laid out for us. Um, this commentary track isn't going to be added to the song. This is just so the video can hear me. Um, we've already got it mapped out, as you can see. If you want to see a more in-depth process of what mapping drums looks like, I'll probably make a video in the future. It just, at the time, seems like a boring video to make, but if that's what you're interested in, if that's what you're trying to accomplish, I'll definitely make one in the future. We've got our uh, song map right here. You can see the intro, verse, chorus, where everything is. This makes it a lot easier when it comes to playing the instruments to see where you are, because if this is gone and uh, you pretend that these little sections right here are missing, it's kind of hard to tell where you are, and uh, you'll get lost in your head sometimes thinking, am I on like measure four of the verse and is the pre-chorus next? And then you hit, start going on for the pre-chorus and you missed it and it's a lot of, uh, a lot of trial and error. But uh, Studio One has this song map that you can make and that gets rid of a lot of that headache. So, but just very briefly um, with drum mapping so you can get a concept if you don't know what this is at all uh say you want to do we'll do something stupid real quick like a like a bucket of fish fill don drums you got that bucket of fish bucket of fish we can do uh got the snare right here can hit that snare we'll do a uh high floor low floor and then a kick and that's your bucket of fish We'll do a big finish, so we'll get the snare or the uh, cymbal hit at the end. So you end your show. Thank you for coming out. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> mapping drum mapping drums can be a lot of fun. We'll uh, listen to a bit of this, so you can see where the drums are. This is just the count in for the guitar. But as we're coming in. Let's see uh, what we're working with as far as plugins go. So we can turn everything off right now and then listen to that to what that sounds like. That's what I mean by getting lost, because um, this verse is playing, and you'll be hearing it, but if you lose count, and all you're listening to is... Sometimes you don't know that this pre-chorus is about to hit until you hear that first drum. It makes it a lot easier. So what plugins do I have on this? We'll start with this. Uh, let's go into something a little louder. We'll start at the pre-chorus, that's fine. And then we'll bring up these plugins so you can hear what they're doing, what they're adding. So I kicked off a lot of the really lows. I boosted the kick. It looks like it's sitting at 64 hertz for this drum set that I picked. Um, I rolled off a little bit of the snare so it's not so tinny, so ringy. It, uh, let's see if you can hear it. The chorus isn't good. There's a lot of snare in there. Without it. And with. See, it's a little less snappy but it's fuller and then I put a little bit up where the cymbals are so you can hear it over the guitars in the future so that's the EQ we'll go ahead and add the optical compressor a little bit of gain reduction going on I've got a round of three ratio without it little bit of a difference. 
So next we've got another round of EQ. This one looks a bit more reductive. Um, so reduction EQ is when you're going to go through this um, spectrum and find, I look for the ringing that's really annoying and I just carve it out. So let's see if uh, this makes sense. So we'll play the pre-chorus again. Turn this on. It really thinned it out and made it a little bit more digestible. It's really boomy. So taking that out allows room in the future down here um, when you're keeping an eye on your uh, loudness levels. You can fit a little more in there because bass takes up a lot more space. This is playing in the background. Bass takes up a lot more space than treble does. So if a lot of your tracks are really boomy, that's what is going to attribute to a lot of muddy sound when your song's done. So it is good common practice to carve out a lot of this, um, like between 75 and 0 hertz. A lot of that needs to go. So what did I carve out? Let's look at yellow here, uh, 201 hertz. Let's see why I carved it out. Okay, it's the really low end of the snare. There was some boominess in there. How about this green one? That's at 771. A little bit of the air from the snare. Then the extreme highs and extreme lows. So there's the boominess. And that's just too much air for me. Okay. And then uh, saturation. Okay. So this, I really like the sound of old like punk heavy rock uh songs a lot of garage type stuff i don't like it super polished i don't like it really crystal clear i like crap i like just junk rock it's that's my favorite so uh all this saturator knob is doing is giving the impression of crappy microphones in a small room but this adds a lot of volume, so let's let's see. It's gonna get a lot louder. You need to ignore that. You got to ignore that. Louder doesn't always mean better. Just because you can hear it better doesn't mean it sounds better. So loudness always gives the impression that you're doing a good job it sounds better but that's not true i want to try to emulate what this is actually doing without the impression of it being louder so let's see if i can do that we're gonna have to gain stage so the volume without it we're sitting at about 12 and then with it All this is doing is adding crunchiness to it. So we'll do it a little bit uh, slower. We'll, we'll roll it up so you can hear what it's adding. Disregard the volume. Listen to how it's breaking up the snare. It sounds shallower and more in your face. It's a lot more aggressive. It just sounds like you're in a room, which is what I'm going for. So that works out perfectly. I think we've got a good idea on the drums. We can move on to bass. All right, we are recording bass, so we need to get a new track. We can head over to the menu, get a good mono track. Name it. Name your tracks. Because, uh... Later, if you decide you want to do like 12 or 15 or some people do like 30 tracks and if they're all named 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you're going to regret it. So we got our bass track. Um, I think, okay, input L. We need to go to 
two, because I'm on the main one, so you can hear me. Okay, we're good. Now, I like to start off with gain staging whenever I bring an instrument into the mix. So I've got my drums, we need to pick a loud part, and I want all of my tracks around minus 12. That's where I kind of keep everything. So if we get our drums and start playing them, you can see I brought them around minus 12. So now when I'm playing bass, and I'll do a uh, little part here so I can That looks pretty loud. Where did it end up going? Let's try again. Brought me around minus 12. So that is if you don't have um, a preset folder that you go with, I like to try to make all of my songs somewhat consistent so I have templates that I use for each drums. For instance, we use this template that I made for my drums. I'm going to do the same thing on bass. I'm showing you what the gain staging looks like. So if we go and grab my bass folder and we listen to what that sounds like. We got to bring it up to 12 again. So now if we move this to a section that has the drums in, not just the hi-hats, you can differentiate a little bit because they're both kind of at the same volume. See how that works? So that's a little bit of gain staging. I'm going to play the bass line. I'm going to do for the song, so I might skip that. But uh, once I get everything laid out, I'm going to go back through just like with the drums and show you what each plugin is doing. Um, just because I can't have my commentary set to record and you won't be able to hear me at all while I'm recording bass. So I think I'll just knock that out real quick and then we'll move on from there. bass track yay now what is it doing so we can go through here turn off all of the plugins and take a look at what's going on and I'm gonna try to limit the amount of hot mic I have while I'm listening to the bass because it bleeds like crazy and it'll start ringing I'll get a lot of feedback so I'm going to turn this off so we can run through each one and listen to what it's doing and then I'll try to go back and explain a little bit. So we'll start with the compressor. So you see I'm getting about 9 almost decibels of gain reduction at a 5 ratio, 5 to 1 ratio. And I've got only about three decibels of makeup gain added to it. That's because I compress the hell out of bass guitars. This is the difference between the raw track and compressing it. basically slamming off that extreme loudness and bringing up the lows or the quiet bringing up the quiet turning down the loud and that's what compression is anything that's too quiet in the sound it's gonna make it louder 
whatever is ridiculously overpowering, I'm getting rid of it. And that's because, like I mentioned earlier in drums, the low end takes up a lot of space in sound. And I want to limit that as much as possible without it being too, um, too scooped. Not enough low end. Don't want that. So next we'll move on to this uh, BOD overdrive, which is basically a plug-in version of a Sans amp, which is a very time-tested true uh, distortion pedal for bass guitars. And I think they've got um, like a regular guitar version, but that's beside the point. So this is what this uh, Sans amp comp is doing. It's adding some filth to it. I love it. Uh, drives all the way, levels a little bit from Unity. Um, added presence, added highs, little bit of lows. All that high is kind of taking the pressure off of that really low uh, section and making it's going to make the bass a little easier to tell in your final mix um it's not just going to be from feeling the bass it's going to be you can hear it too it's a great pick for this little um project so eq what did we call that earlier that's reductive a little bit of reductive eq looks like i found some ringing that i didn't like so i scooped out some of those highs scooped out the extreme lows That's what it was. The scraping the fingers on the frets uh, it really tamed that sound out a lot. So let's move on to this one. Don't like that. Our bass. I like our bass. Because without it, the bass does not have that depth that I need. Just adds that thump. What do we got on EQ? A little bit of carving, more of a sculpting going on. What is that doing? really smoothed out the tone, made it a lot less aggressive and made it sit in the mix a little bit better. So it's, you can see nothing is up to the level. So instead of just turning the gain down, I was a little more selective with where I wanted um, the levels to be a little louder, where I wanted to get rid of a little bit of annoyances that I was hearing. So that's why this like slight hilly pattern is going on. It's not reductive in the sense that I'm not trying to isolate a frequency and get rid of it. I'm isolating more of a spectrum and bringing those down a little bit more than the others because this is a lot quieter um, and I just didn't want to turn down the volume because I think it was a little uh, I think it was a little muddy in areas. I think it was a little too harsh in some areas. So we can hear that again. Just smoothed everything out so we can get it ready for guitars. There is one. We missed something. We need these two tracks to talk to each other because right now we've got drums in one room, bass in another room, and they're playing to themselves without really communicating with each other. Which is fine. You can get away with doing that. And I think this song... It could be fine, but I want to add a little bit of something, a little bit, um, 
a little bit of glue. I love when bass and drums talk to each other. So what we're gonna do is select both our drums and bass. We're gonna right click and we're gonna add a bus for the selected channels. This is gonna be the rhythm section bus. That's our rhythm section. And I do have presets that I made for just this instance. I've got my rhythm section. Now this is gonna get a lot louder um, because we've got this leveling tool here. This is a, uh, and Mongoose. What Mongoose does is takes all the bass out of the stereo image, puts it all into the middle, so you've got your foundation of, you know, your kick and your low bass. That's gonna be sitting in the middle of the track and then it's gonna allow all of your high end or your guitars or cymbals and stuff like that to be floating around in the stereo space. That's what I do with my rhythm section and we can hear the difference. So we'll turn everything off and then I'll turn it on when these go blue, it's on. and the drums talking to each other a little bit. They're a little, little bit glued together. I didn't really add any compression, but just kind of getting rid of a little bit of the peaks, um, adding a little bit of ratio, added some gain. So we can, let's look at this real quick. Removing about two decibels off of the extreme highs or the extreme loud uh, without really adding the lows back into the mix. It's just kind of cutting it off. So it sounds a little bit more like both of these instruments are playing in the same room, which is what I want. So now we've got our bass, we've got our drums, they're talking to each other. We're getting a feel of how a uh, threshold is coming together. We are not quite done yet. We still got guitars, we've still got vocals, we've got some mixing to do, maybe a little bit of mastering and get this song ready uh, to be released. So we got some stuff to look forward to and I hope you come back with me. Next time we're gonna come back and work on some guitars. And I hope to see you there. <laughs> <laughs>